So this is a song called I Am More. I'm a bit of a Jungian kind of fan. I'm also a psychiatric nurse. Um, so this thing of bringing our darkness into the light is really appealing to me about embracing all that is in us, whether what we like and what we don't like. So this is called I Am More. sounding more country and western <laughs> than I usually do. I do actually have a gig next Friday in a place called Castlemania in Victoria. I'm from Melbourne and um, I'm doing the classic queens of country as part of uh, the second show. I also do a tribute show to Emmy Lou Harris and Linda. So I have to put my twang in but tonight you're getting it for free. <laughs> All right. So um, recently we celebrated Mother's Day and um, my mother and I had a very rocky relationship when we were younger, when I was younger, yeah, we were both younger. Um, 
being the eldest girl of seven kids and she was the eldest of seven as well you know so I think there was some dynamics happening there that um, you know kind of my father was a bit of a Peter Pan character and was not really around much to do much of the heavy load work so she relied on me a lot so there was a lot of clashes and particularly when I came to Australia you know or when we we all came to Australia in 1972 you know, it was like, girls in Ceylon, girls in Sri Lanka, don't do this, don't do that, you know. So trying to break some of those cultural barriers. Like, I went to my first school camp and I wasn't allowed to wear jeans because girls in Ceylon didn't wear jeans and I felt so awful, you know, being this only kid. It was like the only kid in, uh, with brown skin in a school of 800 girls at the time, 1972. It was still the white Australia policy. So anyway, but we had lots of time over the years to to make up. And uh, unfortunately, during COVID, my mum fell and broke a hip and ended up in a nursing home and actually passed away. Both my parents ended up in a nursing home and um, passing away within a few months of each other. So she never got to hear this song live that I wrote for her. But really, without her determination, her hard work and her generosity and all that, we wouldn't have come even to Australia. So um, I'm very grateful for, you know, the way that she made, the path that she made for us. So I sang this to her over the Zoom and she had a little dig at me over the last verse. I say like mother, like daughter, you know. Um, anyway, she never got to hear this song, but I'd like to share it with you. It's called My Mother, and it's dedicated to anyone who's nurtured or who's mothered in anyone in any way, or lost anyone over the last, last couple of years. Ah! Uh -huh. 
full of grace. My mother, dear is your face. Strong will, strong hearted, strong tail, death departs. My mother, full of My mother, full of grace. Okay, I'm going get to get you to sing along now. So I've always loved singing. When I was a child, I would scribble down words of songs, listen. So, I, so I'm what they call a burger. I don't know if anyone knows about the burgers in Sri Lanka or Ceylon, as it was known um, then. Um, it, it's sort of like Anglo-Indian. So anyone, so my surname is Herft, so it's descended from the Dutch, hence my height, blue eyes as well. So there's that mix, so anyone who has descended basically the Dutch and uh, not so much the Portuguese, but the British who were there. So the Portuguese were there first colonizing in 14 something or another, then the Dutch in 16 something, and then um, <coughs> England in, um, I think, 18 something or another. So it's been a long history of colonization. So there's people of uh, European, mix, descent, whatever. So I'm one of those. So we, we spoke English and we listened to the BBC. Well, there was one English radio station that came through. So I'd listen to songs by the Beatles, by Lulu, by The Seekers, by, you know, Engelbert Humperdinck. Please release me, let me go. You know, whatever was on the radio. And I just loved it, and I tried to scribble down words and, and sing along. And then I joined a choir, and then I came here. So this is a little kind of story of uh, my, uh, my love of singing. And um, it's got a very easy chorus, and I'll teach it to you. <coughs> Get the bit of phlegm out of my throat. I'll teach it to you as I go along, okay? So it's called Sing. And you can do a harmony if it's too low. First thing I did from the time I was born was open my lungs to sing out a song. My daddy would call for me to hurry along to hear the radio play. 
came out shop in a place so far. Me and my mum riding back on the bus, twelve dollars to hold my treasure in the box. Now who watched the Partridge Family? Anyone? I was in love with Susan Day and I wanted to learn the piano but my mother said we couldn't afford it so I thought oh well maybe the guitar and I could be like David Cassidy. David Cassidy, first part of play that's grown into fierce fire today wishing I took my guitar to the folk guitar mass I learnt all the chords from the book I stole back I was a shy little girl without much to say Songs gave me a voice, transformed my life since that day Johnny and Judy, Janice and Joe so many good songs And I'll make my own I can sing for hours Spilling my joy I'm a singer of songs Come sing along with me Let's sing La Okay, so um, as I was telling you earlier, I've been doing uh, psychiatric nursing for 36 years, and um, in the last, thank you, in the last month I've uh, decided, because I can't really afford my mortgage anymore, um, to give it up and try and pay off my mortgage with my super. And um, anyway, so, and then probably have to go back and do some agency work, or which there's plenty. But I was managing a program where um, a lot of these, a lot of my patients were on this really um, quite a heavy duty antipsychotic called clozapine. Um, but it's, it's sort of known as the medication of last choice when nothing else has worked people get put on to that it's quite a toxic medication but it does work at keeping people you know um, relatively stable and some of them free of symptoms but by the time people often get to be on this medication and it can be fatal so there's a lot of blood monitoring and cardiac monitoring and everything that goes with this medication and training of GPs to to look out for you know um, all these metabolic disorders but um, a lot of people have you know terrible histories you know when you look at 
And often by the time, um, you know, they've been with us for quite a few years, most of them have lost connections with families. And, you know, I've been to quite a few funerals where I'm the only person there other than, um, or in palliative care when someone's dying of cancer, you know, holding their hand or cleaning out their rooming house, little room when they've passed away. So um, anyway, there's one such funeral I was attending of a woman I'd looked after. She'd come from a big family that she had some very, she'd shown me some very old photos of her when she was younger, many years back anyway. So I went to the funeral, but on, on the way to go to the funeral was, as I said, little about half a dozen people there, some from the residential care home she was living in. I just, something came to my mind and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna stop off to the florist and buy her a long stem red rose. Because I thought, I don't know if Pauline's ever had anyone give her a long stem red rose. So I literally scribbled down the chorus of this song in the car. And um, I suppose I just want to dedicate it to all the beautiful people that um, I learned a lot from too. It wasn't just me looking after them. You know, they taught me. There's another woman called Mary who passed away recently. I love you, Suzette. You just give me the biggest hug, you know. Um, just, yes, yeah, so there's such love loving them, you know, as well. So anyway, this is for all my beautiful people I looked after. It's called No One. Drinking 
too much wine He tried to leave it all behind No one beside you No one to hide you No one, no one at all So I will bring you a long stem red rose to place upon your grave. Yes, I will bring you a long stem red rose for love that never came and hope that love will find a way. To you I pray that love has found a way to you I think what I've sung so far are all new songs, so I'm waiting to record them. So if you'd like to get onto my mailing list, either ask Wayne or you can look me up, suzetteherf.com, and I can let you know when those songs are available. But this is one I have recorded. Um, this is called Send Me an Angel, and I believe we all have an angel, and all we have to do is call. Call for help. Ask. And, you know, we're sent the guidance that we need to, to hear. So, um, yeah, this is for, we've all had three years of difficult times. So I'm just give, sending you an angel. So this is on my album, Roses, if anyone's interested.
finish off this set with this song called Red Guitar Girl. I know I'm not a girl, but this is my red guitar that I had custom made by Mayton, um, which is the Australian made guitar factory down in Melbourne. And as you can see, there's a rose coming out of like a broken world there. I did that drawing when I was about 18, 19. I didn't know it then. I called it beauty out of brokenness. It was a hand holding this earth and, you know, this rose. And um, anyway, they said, do you want anything on it? And I thought, you know, I want that rose. and the world so they did a beautiful you know mother of pearl and bits of different colored bits there for the the world and over the time so i had this done for me in 2016 i think and um i've come to realize that's my little guiding star or comp compass you know that thing about creating beauty out of brokenness that I think is I didn't know a thing you know sometimes your purpose or your your mission in life sometimes comes to you much later even though it's always been there you know um, in a way so anyway this is my red guitar often at festivals I like to go and sit in a pub somewhere and try and win over the locals because often the locals don't like this invasion of people who come into their particularly the little towns and i feel like you know i go in there and i sing all the old songs from cheating heart to i don't know ring of fire and um you know yellow submarine and god knows what else so um i've got this kind of head for all these old songs that I collected over the years. So um, I'm good in a session, in a single session. And I run a regular session in Melbourne with a friend of mine, Catherine, um, every third Wednesday of the month at The Quiet Man uh, in Flemington. But anyway, um, I, one night I spent eight hours singing there on the last day. Of the, you know, the, my friends dragged me out at like three in the morning. I can't do that anymore. My voice doesn't have the stamina uh, to do that. But I just love that sense of bringing joy. You see people's faces change, you know, um, and it's just wonderful. So this is called Red Guitar Girl, and I'm going to teach your part as I go along. Okay. <laughs> But to forget for a while, to dream of a second chance, and you go, do you, do you need a second chance? Shall we try that? Okay. Okay. She will sing for those who want to dance. Do you, do you, do you want to dance? We forget for a while.
door Her voice is scratched and her fingers are warm She sings to the joy, lights in the eyes Faces once hard, softened with smiles